Hey guys, what's up? It's Shelby here and I wanted to start doing something a little bit different on my channel and bringing you guys content that... Oh my loves, I want to start this off by apologizing that I did not get this video up when I planned to, July 1st, because in between nannying, working my part-time job, planning the retreat, my Wi-Fi has been out, so I've had to find the time to go to coffee shops and edit this video. So again, I apologize. Let's jump into the video now. And I wanted to start doing something a little bit different on my channel and bringing you guys content that I really enjoy watching and helping you get to know me better, who I am, because if you guys don't know, I just recently launched a retreat with my friend, Ali Cass. We're doing all sorts of beautiful things on that retreat in October 2019. If you haven't checked it out, I will link our website down below so you can check out the details, see if doing something with mindfulness, meditation, movement, beach stuff and adventures is up your alley. The early bird special is happening right now. So I'll link all that information down below. But after we launched that retreat, we went live on my Instagram, her Instagram, my Facebook, her Facebook. We went live for about an hour essentially. And we went to a coffee bar after and we're talking on this super incredibly comfortable couch. And I was telling her how I was feeling really drained by the content that I was producing on YouTube and you guys might have noticed that I didn't do the most recent full moon and I haven't even recorded or thought about a new moon meditation to do for you guys. And it's not necessarily that I am um, don't enjoy teaching meditation, I do. And that's why I want to do the retreats because I, I like doing it personally one-on-one. -on -one. And this isn't to say that I won't put meditations on this channel, I definitely will. They'll just be in a different capacity and more from um, a creative flow rather than a need to get them out for like the new or the full moons. But I was talking to her, I hope that all makes sense. If it doesn't and you have questions, you can leave them down below. But I was talking to her how I wanted to do something different and I felt like there was a part of me that I was holding back from you guys from this channel because I felt like it wasn't in line with mindfulness and meditation and which I, what I share and preach here. And she brought it into a beautiful light that I had also been thinking about. And it was to show the true me, to show the true things that I move through. Oh, hopefully this isn't blurry. The true things that I move through and the true nature of a journey into mindfulness and meditation. I feel like on YouTube and Instagram and just in the social media world and even now in magazines because yoga and mindfulness is so popular and trendy almost, we perceive it as this sitting here, zen, perfection, doing perfect yoga moves and I think there needs to be truth out there about what the journey's like, what the journey's like even for people that have been teaching it for a while, people that have been practicing it for a while. So I hope that this new content that I want to start rolling out helps put that into perspective for you so that you can see the true nature and the okayness and the beauty of your own journey. You know, you can start a meditation habit, you can start bringing more presence and mindfulness into your into your life and into your daily routines, but some weeks are going to be better than others. Some days are going to be better than others. And the true nature of meditation is to just be able to notice when you are pouring from your cup too much or to notice when you are bringing things into your life that aren't in alignment with you or to notice where your breath is at in a certain situation. So with all that being said, I want to do a mukbang or mukbang, whatever you want to call it, with you guys. I have my lunch here, I have some water here, I've been doing a lot more drinking of water and trying to get better at that. And I feel like that's necessary to tell you guys because, you know, for me at least in my journey, I've seen this image of perfection and I drink this much water a day and I'm so healthy and I eat all these greens and you know, it's not always like that and I want to be real here for you guys. I want to help you raise your wellness in a way that makes you feel okay with exactly where you are right now. So we're going to jump into this mukbang here. I'll show you what I have. And another thing I want to 
kind of break the foundation of is mukbangs. We're resituated now. My battery died. All right. Why is this? Oh. Mm, there we go. So this is the truth behind what it looks like to create these videos for you guys. <laughs> I gotta put my focus on. There we go. So I want to break the walls with mukbangs because a lot of mukbangs I see on YouTube that are like Chick-fil-A and Taco Bell, Chipotle, uh, different places that are fast food restaurants and I want to do a mukbang for you that's you know a typical day in what I eat I have been cooking more at home saving money cooking at home doing a lot of proteins and a lot oh, I just spit <laughs> um, doing a lot of proteins and like sauteed veggies has been my jam now that it's summertime here in Florida it's getting super hot and it's not even August yet or September when it gets really hot so keeping things light so here's my mukbang for today. We're gonna do some steamed veggies here. I have zucchini or summer squash and kale and avocado. I have a side of lemon here. And then this tempeh here, I used to do stew raw tempeh all the time. But this tempeh has a little teriyaki sauce that I put in a pan so it got like all caramely on the side because there's sugar in the teriyaki sauce. So when you put it in the pan, it gets hot and it caramelizes on there. And then I just have my 32 ounce jug of water here with my straw. Been really jamming on the water lately. I figured while we were doing this, now that I have gotten a lot of things out of the way about the nature of my channel and what I've been doing and, and where I want to take the channel and where I want to take you guys, I figured that I would just, you want to try some lemon? I have an email here. Oh, not about it? Mmm, <laughs> it's sour. <laughs> uh, I figured I would just answer some questions so you guys can get to know me better and get to know my journey with meditation and mindfulness better and just kind of be here one-on-one, -on -one, you know? Chilling. So, my name is Shelby. Nicole is my middle name. And I'm currently here in Florida. I'm also really bad at like talking and eating at the same time, so bear with me. Um, I'm currently here in Florida. I've been here for about eight years. I moved here to go to college, and everyone talks about how, wow, moving to Florida from Maine you, it must have been so such a drastic change for you, for you. And I, I think back to it, and it didn't seem like a huge change to me. And I think that really truly goes to show when you're in alignment with where you're supposed to be going, it just feels normal and it feels natural and it doesn't feel, you know, like a chaotic whirlwind or a huge scary transformation. It may seem like a, a transformation or a change, but it doesn't seem huge and scary. At least that's what's happened for me in my life. Things seem to flow very nicely and very easily when you're in alignment, but sometimes getting to that alignment space and coming from the heart space rather than the head space is hard to get there. Um, so yeah, I came down here for college. That's the humble story. Um, I'm 26. She's my protector. I'm 26. My birthday is coming up depending on when this video goes up, it's July 20th. These are so good. Mm. So I am a cancer baby. I am very much in the need of... <laughs> Do you want some of these? Can <laughs> you see her nose? A <laughs> little sneak. Uh, I... Have a kiss? Oh, thank you. Mm, that was a slobbery one. Uh, I always need to be near water. I really love paddle boarding. Namely, you're affecting my light. She's literally just dead staring at my food right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I love paddle boarding. Being in Florida, near the water, you can paddleboard 
a lot. I might be going to <laughs> to the spring soon to go paddleboarding with my friend. Uh, what else can I tell you about me? So I started meditation a couple of years back and I kind of had dabbled in it on and off. I live in this really awesome city here in Florida that I really like to call the self-care city. And I don't know if it's like that for everyone. This is my dog Nemo, she's two. Say hi. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's like that for everyone or if it's just the community that I have found here, which really great community here in Florida. Um, lots of yoga, lots of people who are into the environment and caring about each other and caring about the sea since we're so close to the water and mm -hmm. there's a lot of people mm -hmm. here that practice Reiki, practice massage, practice um, holistic healing methods and do a lot of stuff within this kind of holistic sphere and I think it's really cool that St. Pete does that and I and it's it's been amazing to see my transformation in this space I'm definitely heavily influenced by the environment here to become a teacher but I think that's kind of always been my path and just being in this city has helped to amplify amplify that and create confidence in that space because there's so many people here that you can collaborate and share things with and I totally up until two years ago never thought that I would be teaching meditation or mindfulness in that matter but from what you guys can see on my channel I've shared for a while probably I don't know when the first time I posted a video was maybe three years ago or four years ago I've shared a lot about self-care because Self-care has been my place of healing, place of healing from depression and suicidal thoughts, my place of healing from feelings of uh, unworthiness, my place of healing from mindsets of not having abundance or, or money. And it's not to say all of those things are perfect right now. They definitely aren't like anywhere near where... I could potentially want them to be, but they're exactly where they're supposed to be right now for me to learn and grow from. So my focus really has been in this self-care area. And I don't even remember when I first heard about meditation. I don't even remember when I first heard about yoga. I know I took a yoga class way back in the day in Maine, but I don't even like remember it really. But I think that these similar wavelengths of thought have always been there in my mind and I don't know if it's because my mom used to talk to me that way or it's just kind of something that's in my mindscape from a past life or just the way that my my path is for this lifetime is to learn and grow in this realm of self-care and to share it as of right now and and share what I've learned after so much research online like hours and hours and hours and hours and classes taken and workshops taken and experimentation I've shared some of that stuff here on this channel like my Vipassana retreat which I really hope to go on another one soon um, there's just been and there's even stuff that I haven't documented and put on this channel because I felt like it was wasn't as professional to share what I was learning and to show that I was learning and now I really want to show you guys that because that's really truly a part of your journey and you have to understand that people that even show up and present themselves as teachers they're incredible teachers I love teaching and there's a lot of people that get a lot of value from my teachings but they are still learning and growing and figuring life out to be honest and I still practice it every day. It's a learning lesson for me and sitting down and meditating is great, but moving that practice of awareness and mindfulness into your daily life is really where I have at least truly been able to see the effects of the practice. You know how they say like you have yoga and then yoga off the mat. It's the same thing of, of practicing presence practicing mindfulness, practicing awareness, and practicing compassion and understanding in your life for yourself. And I do want to talk on that a little bit, having compassion for yourself and ease in your journey because 
I, up until, um, I want to say three or four years ago, I was working like four jobs. And right now I'm working, I have like three nannying jobs and, and I did a retreat to make it as full and whole and tailored to you guys. So if you haven't applied, the application for the retreat is free and it's a 10, 10 question form so that we can get to know you better and really cultivate the space to be well tailored to you guys. So make sure that you do that if you are even thinking about it. So yeah, a couple of years ago I was working a lot of jobs. I was working four jobs and working in the kitchen, helping my friend with her her business as she was opening it up and working at a juice bar that I still work at and enjoy and I was cleaning houses and I also had a nannying job um, with three boys after school. So every single day it was jam packed doing a bunch of stuff and I didn't really have this foundation of meditation and mindfulness under my belt, this foundation of presence and the I wasn't truly listening to my heart and that habit started in my memory in college after my dad passed away. He passed away about two months after I had moved down. I had a whole video about that on here. Um, he passed away about two months after I moved down from suicide and depression and later I came to find out that he had, um, he was bipolar as well and, and all that stuff kind of just piled on itself. So after that, without even thinking, I think I really poured myself into my work and into running a bunch of programs and camps, not camps, excuse me, programs and clubs at school to keep my mind busy and essentially that pattern followed me into my adult life outside of schooling and into doing all these jobs and keeping myself busy myself busy and there was one day I was doing this challenge on Instagram and it was like asking certain questions reflective questions and really helping us open up to listening to ourselves and that was the first time I had ever done that but it felt very easy and very natural for me to step into that space. And it unveiled a lot of stuff in me to deal with my dad, to deal with myself. I was bullied in, in middle school, which led to internal bullying and, and self-confidence issues. And all that stuff just kind of piled on itself and really brought me into this pinnacle, like climax point in my adult life where I was so burnt out, working so many jobs and feeling so run down and still feeling so behind in my bills and in my life and in everything. I was just feeling so burnt out and so tired and so run down, which I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to that. So I hope that you're listening to this story and maybe getting in from, uh, inspiration from it. And that was when I, I started four years ago about tapping into listening to intuition, listening to the heart and realizing that I had been burning myself out by working and creating my life from this lack mindset, from this feeling of being not enough, of not having enough, of not being able to live the life that I wanted. And I was creating my life, taking jobs, doing work, um, even put what the things I put on my to-do list and how I was in my home were all trickled down from this this mindset of not being enough and having lack and and worthlessness and it was just until I started when I started teaching meditation was when I truly was able to find confidence and inspiration and motivation and change from a meditation and mindfulness practice. So if any of you out there are thinking about teaching yoga, teaching mindfulness, doing any kind of healing arts, you know, go out there and do it. Even if you don't feel like you're 
perfect at it yet or you feel like you still have so much to learn, go out and do it because when I started teaching, that's when I truly started learning so much because you learn more vividly what you teach because especially in this like yoga or mindfulness or meditation or massage this kind of more intuitive arts you get to see front and center what your mind is doing and where your heart is and that'll help direct you And I got to see the really amazing parts of my mind. I got to see the parts of me that were inspiring and motivating. And I got to see all of the research and workshops I had done, done come front and center in my teachings and in how I shared them with people. And I got to, for the first time in my life, feel like I was creating myself. Feel like I was creating the relationships with people that I really wanted to create and foster and cultivate in my life when I started teaching because I was seeing front and center more amplified and light shining loving compassionate version of myself and for a long time that was hidden under layers and layers of thought patterns of not feeling worthy and I think teaching helped to brighten that internal light that was dimmed so much by those lack and unworthy mindsets. So go out there and teach, you know, even if it starts with a small group of people that you want to teach about healthy eating or talk about A Course in Miracles or talk about some workshop that you just had or start a book club or maybe teach like 15 minute meditations or 15 minute yoga classes, mindful movement classes, whatever it is that you have in your life that you are doing right here in this moment that you find value in, you should teach it to people because that's when you're gonna see how amazing the practice is and that's when you're gonna call in the people that are supposed to be in your sphere. If I had never taught meditation, I would have never met Allie and I probably would never have found the confidence to host a retreat. And I'm so grateful that over the past two years, things have really started to trickle in and align and, and the more positive parts of myself were being shown and manifested into my actual reality. Whereas before, it felt so cloudy in my head. People asked you, like, I'm sure you've had people ask you, it's very prominent in our like health sphere here on YouTube and Instagram. Like, what is your vision? What are your goals in life? Like, what are your big dreams? For a long time, I didn't have any, and no one talks about that. So it was very frustrating because I, I've been asked that question so many times, but I never had a vision. And my vision now is coming together only because I've started taking action in my life from a heart-centered space. You know, I don't have the vision in my head. I'm seeing little pieces and parts that I really enjoy come together and make sense and feel good and I didn't formulate it or create it in my mind. It's just, I keep listening to my heart. I keep following the things that feel good and make me happy. And, you know, that doesn't look like a nine to five job. That doesn't look like using my college degree. I mean, I studied cultural anthropology, so you can put that into anything, truly. But it's not like a specific job, like I went to school for computer tech and I do computer tech or coding or whatever. It's, it's right now in my life following the things that bring me joy and happiness because for so long I neglected that and created a life that was very unhealthy for me and very harmful for me and like just thinking about them, I can feel that my heart sinks and whenever I talk to my therapist she does a lot of stuff with like law of attraction and and your thoughts and things like that and it seems that whenever we talk I point to different chakras in my body and I can just imagine that time in my life when I was moving from that space of lack and, and worry and fear and not feeling enough 
I can feel like my heart sinking and now it feels it's not like so elated but it, it's getting up to the point where it's going to feel good and feel healthy and you know to like my mom and my grandparents they don't really understand what I'm doing they're always asking like are you making enough money when are you going to get a real job and it's you know follow the things that make you happy and that keep you stable you know I think that's where you can build your life from and and there's so many people out in the world and so many older individuals that we get a lot of our mentorship from and this is not to negate anything your parents say or your grandparents or whomever you take advice from that's older than you sometimes that will resonate with you and you should listen if it does but there seems to be this overlying mentality of get a good job make money and then you'll be happy and I that coming out of my mouth now seems really cliche to be talking about this topic but do what brings you joy and know that the opportunities will come when you're in that vibration of joy have trust and faith I have a ring here that I had made after I read Jen Sincero's you're a badass and you're a badass at making money and it says have unwavering faith and gratitude it's super small lettering so I don't think you can like ever see it but has unwavering faith and gratitude and have unwavering faith and gratitude that if you're following your joy you're following your heart and what it's saying that things will start to align and we negate that or neglect that so often in this day and age and in this life it becomes so normal to neglect that and to achieve different these other successes of money and wealth and and material things and I think what we need to bring back is the knowledge that following what brings us joy and happiness can still and will still bring us all of those material worldly successes that we could possibly want. There's not just this one road, one track way of gaining those things if that's what you, you truly want in your life. So listen to your intuition and listen to your heart and have unwavering faith and trust that things are going to line up. and they did for me they have for me they still are for me doing that and i want to share that with you guys so that you can have that knowledge too because i wish someone could have told me that so that i could put more faith in my joy put more faith in following my joy and the things that i love and the relationships that i love instead of putting faith in this seemingly very mundane, for me at least, nine to five jobscape. You know, you can have success in any area of your life, in any path that you take. If it resonates with you, you will have success because you will be successful. You will have the material things that you want, the stability that you want, but you also have the stability here and the joy here and and the connection here too that's really important as well just as material goods and sustaining yourself and paying your bills and paying for the life that you want are important having connection having wealth and abundance here is important as well so keep that in mind when you look at just take today for example and look at the life around you and see just see no judgment or no needing to feel bad about where you are in your life or the choices you've made in your life. Just look and see why are you in the job that you're in? Why did you make the choice to be in this job that you're in right now? Why did you make the choice to be in whatever place you're in right now? Whether it's on your couch, in your bed, at a job, in another country, wherever, wherever you are. Why did you, why are you choosing that place right now? Is it are you choosing it because you think you need to choose it or are you choosing it because you feel good about that choice because it makes you joyful and you can do that in all areas of your life just be a little reflective today this has a, I have not been eating at all um, but just be a little reflective today and just say hmm that's interesting in my MBSR training which I did share on here as well um, through the meditation practice, through the mindful movements that they teach, you just say, hmm, that's 
that's interesting. And through Vipassana too, you, you just, you look at the sensations in the body and you say, hmm, that's interesting, let me keep watching it and see what it is for real instead of making judgments immediately. So just take today and reflect. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to just do that a little bit while I drink this. I hope you guys have enjoyed this mukbang. I hope that you have gained some insight and maybe some inspiration and maybe just needed to hear whatever it is that you needed to hear right now. And if you are going to use the lesson of just reflecting and asking yourself why you are in the place that you're in, what choice did you make and where did you make that choice from in the heart or the head, I hope that you find it interesting whatever it is that you find. Remember, no judgment about what it is you find or no judgment about yourself. We're all learning and we're humans. So just find it interesting and just ask the question. We spend so much time trying to figure things out that we never ask why. So I hope you guys do that. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these types of videos like this, drop a comment down below. Let me know what it is about this video that you liked, what it is you want to see more of. And for those of you who do not follow me on Instagram, please go do that because I'm going to be talking more on there about the retreat. I also try to get on there on a daily basis and share stuff with you guys in my story. I hope that you can check out the video before this where I talked a little bit more about the retreat. You can check out the website, like I said, it's linked down below. I'll link my Instagram down below so you guys can go follow that and answer the, uh, or put in your questions that you have about the retreat. And I love you guys. I'm really glad to be doing this more personal time with you and getting to know you better and you getting to know me better. So until next time, I love you and I'm so, so grateful for you.